the instant relief from the symptoms, like it, it starts working right away. Now, looking back, I'm like, oh, of all those years that I was all over the place, um, that this has been, I, I, yeah, it feels, yeah, miraculous almost to me because I feel normal. I don't, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but I, I don't think about that anymore. When we go places, we were just biking, camping on the weekend and what a freedom to just, yeah, we decided at the last minute to throw our bikes on and go, yeah, mountain biking and didn't know really where we were going to stay and what we were going to eat and everything. I feel so much freedom right now Mm -hmm. and the fitness is coming back. So that's a huge thing for me as well. So maybe to kick things off, do you want to share a little bit of background on your diagnosis? I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in 1997 and was on and off medications pretty much the whole time I would flare and then go into remission and sometimes on steroids and then, but mostly just the mesalamine and suppository acetylvolk suppositories because it was quite distal, my disease. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I found it to be well controlled with just taking care of myself, diet and exercise and until about six years ago. And then I it really kicked into a flare. And I was on, I think, four rounds of steroids. And every time I came off of them, I would feel fine. And then every time I came off of them, it would just flare. And I, the disease progressed. And then, yeah, the symptoms were nothing like I've ever experienced. It was brutal. So then when I talked to my gastroenterologist after the four rounds of steroids, she said, okay, if these don't work, then we're going to have to look at bioidenticals, which nothing against them, but I just wasn't interested. And I thought that there had to be some other way of, of getting better because it like, that's not the answer. So, and I, I saw you on YouTube because I'm eternally Googling how to heal myself naturally and all those things. And then, and I was watching some testimonials of these people that just got better. And I thought, why couldn't I do that? Like, why can't that be me? And so that's when I contacted you. Awesome. Yeah. So you were diagnosed quite some time ago, uh, 26 years or so, if my math serves me right. Um, In those first 20 or so years leading up to that point, you mentioned six years ago, what was the uh, symptom journey like? Like you mentioned, it was fairly well controlled for the most part just by trying to be healthy. I know you took uh, mesalamine by the sounds of it for quite some time. Yeah. What was the, um, what happened around the time of diagnosis, I guess, that kind of made you, I don't, don't even know if you'll recall specifically, it is a really long time ago, but yeah. um, around the, the time of diagnosis, like like what sort of drove you to, to go and, and speak to a, to a doctor? And then also, what was the symptom journey like from there? I know you say, by the sounds of it, you were mostly pretty good by, you know, just trying to be healthy. But, you know, how often were you affected by flares? Uh, you know, what was your longest time spent symptom free? Um, and just what what did that 20 years kind of look like for you? Because I know some people are, you know, two flares a year, one flare a year. Um, what was it your... Was- yeah, super varied. Um, I had bloody stools and urgency, diarrhea, frequency. Um, not a lot of pain, I wouldn't say, but yeah, it was just how it affected my lifestyle. That I was afraid to go anywhere and be far from a bathroom, and I really like to be active, so that's hard. Um, yeah, so that's why I went. It was mostly, I would say, the blood, blood and mucus in my stools, and just like, yeah, the frequency, urgency during the day. Um, I feel like after they treated me the first time that I was probably, I just stayed on medication for probably five years and was not affected by any symptoms. And then after that, I thought, well, I guess I don't need this anymore. So I, you know, stopped, weaned myself off, took myself off. And then I feel like yeah, I would say twice a year, I would have a flare and then just start using the suppositories again, go back on the mesalamine for a few months. And I would just sort of go through that process a couple of times a year. 
And but I could go a few years for sure with nothing. I mean, I was always sort of aware of it. You know, it's there in the background where you're like, oh, I should probably shouldn't be eating this or yeah. things like that, you know. Um, but yeah, my symptoms weren't super severe. I don't like they weren't debilitating. I was never hospitalized. Mm-hmm. Um it just, I, I feel like more of that time was definitely more of a nuisance, I would say. And it just affected any activities or trips or things. I always, it was always sort of based around whether or not I had access to a bathroom. So right. which was a drag, but yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I think um, I mentioned this in one of, one of my previous videos um, from my perspective. Anyway, if I, were to know and no one can know this but if i were to know factually that uc would never progress to bowel cancer and i would never die from having been diagnosed then then i wouldn't care right like i i wouldn't care about these minor inconveniences to my life if there were a few days a year where I had to stay home or I wasn't, I couldn't go to the beach on a couple of days, or maybe there was a birthday party I had to miss. Um, I honestly wouldn't care um, because I'm governed simplistically by that kind of ultimate fear. And if I knew that 98% of the time I was going to get to live a normal life. Yeah. I just wouldn't care that I, you know, had this, like this brand put on me by, by a doctor. It can be, um debilitating it can affect you know um your social life it can affect your mental health it can make you feel like you're uh locked in a box sometimes and for some people you know for 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 most people actually um, well for a lot of people at least that is uh, a major um barrier to them kind of feeling good and feeling positive and feeling happy for me like i say it, it was really just like the fear of death and that sounds like quite extreme but like that's like the only thing that you know it's the reality only... that's yeah. not that's yeah not... You, you know but but I, I i was never so bothered by like these little inconveniences here and there and i my 20 year ulcerative colitis update i guess kind of uh covers that with the video i did just recently but um what were you doing diet wise over those 20 years like what, was there anything that you were uh, specifically trying to avoid was there a specific diet you were trying to follow all of them um, initially when I was diagnosed, I went to see a naturopath and they, he basically put me on an elimination diet and was, you know, the main ones were to eliminate were wheat and gluten and dairy. Um, I think he also beans as well. So m- mostly I followed that, um, more recently, I would say in the past 10 years, I mean, I've tried, I've followed AIP. I followed the specific carbohydrate diet, which I had a lot of success with initially un- until that about six years ago. Cause usually if I started to feel pretty junky, I would go on the SCD diet and just have such good results with that. Yeah. And then that stopped for me as well. Um, yeah, I would try an elimination diet, but I was never able to be consistent with it. Yeah. And yeah. It's hard. It's, it's, you know, cause food, food is often such a comfort to us, you yeah. know, like if, if we're depressed or we're down or we're any kind of, anything. Uh, yeah, anything, right. Yeah. Like you, you, you turn to food. Uh, food is also like the thing around which a lot of social events are centered and family stuff is centered and, you know, relationship stuff is centered. Like food is such a big part of our lives. And then, you know, when you already feel, you know, pretty crappy, and then you got to also eliminate like the 16 things you actually like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, it sucks. Uh, and I, I like people to try and think of that as like a short term pain for long term gain thing, right? Kind of working out what your trigger foods are um, and then being able to reliably eat a broad list of foods um, moving forwards. But that first few weeks when you're following like a strict elimination diet, it really sucks. But it's the most important part of the whole thing, because if you're if you're trying to work out where symptoms are coming from, and you've got 30, 40, 50 different things in the diet, as most people do, it's really hard. Like, like you don't know if it was the sourdough bread that you had that morning, or if it was the goat's milk you had, or if it was the oats, because you've heard oats might not be the best idea. Did you have too much fiber? Did you have too much sugar? You're trying to work all this stuff out and you just can't because your diet's like, it's big. Um, so, uh, 
Yeah. And also just to your point around specific carbohydrate diet and, and some of these other similar diets, I think, I think they're great. I think they're a great starting point. Um, they're definitely not uh, fix alls for IBD. If they were, then obviously IBD wouldn't really be such a major issue. Yeah. Um, and the, the reason that is, is, you know, we, we're, we're all very different. So we've had different parts of our di digestive tracts affected. We've had different colonies of bacteria disrupted. We're genetically different. We're producing different enzymes. Our immune systems are at different stages of our lives, et cetera. So, you know, obviously following breaking the vicious cycle, which is the text or book that a lot of people go to, you know, doesn't, doesn't quite cut it because there's a lot of nuance to it. Um, so there's definitely a lot of indiv individuality and, you know, between clients, I will, I mean, one of my, one of my most recent testimonials, Tara is vegan, um, right the way through to people who eat, you know, almost exclusively animal based and, and then everything in between. And all of those things can work. There are different ways of achieving bowel rest. There are different ways of achieving microbiome rebalancing, which are kind of two of the fundamental parts of IBD. Um, and based on your genetics, based on your heritage, based on your dietary preferences, based on your religion, um, there does tend to be a way to kind of find that route to, to, to health. Um, so uh, fast forward to now, um, do you maybe want to paint a picture of your uh, symptoms, lifestyle, etc.? Like as in today? Yeah, today. Or, yeah. When, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I think just backtracking a little bit, I was thinking oh, yeah. too, because the, um, the biggest problem was that I wasn't able to exercise anymore. I just found that activity was just destroying me as well. So yeah, that was another reason to find some way around this that hadn't happened to me before either. I was, I could pretty much do whatever I wanted, run marathons, triathlons, all that kind of stuff. And that started to go away where, yeah, even little bike rides were just wiping me out. So that was, that was an important thing for me to help solve as well or work with anyway. Um, yeah. So we started working together in November and it was a birthday present. I turned 50. So that was my birthday present to myself was to, I'm just like, well, the next 50 years are just, I'm going to make them awesome. But yeah. I need some help. So your, that... your, your, your birthday present to yourself was cut out all the food you like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I was the best present ever. Yeah. I, it was, and yeah, I, it's hard for sure. But I think that the instant relief from the symptoms, I can't, it starts working right away. And, and it is, I mean, it, six months is not that long. It felt long, but now looking back, I'm like, oh, of all those years that I was all over the place, um, yeah. that this has been, I, I, yeah, it feels, yeah, miraculous almost to me because I feel normal. I don't, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but I, I don't think about that anymore. When we go places, we were just biking, camping on the weekend and what a freedom to just, yeah, we decided at the last minute to throw our bikes on and go, yeah, mountain biking and didn't know really where we were going to stay and what we we're going to eat and everything. I mean, I'm pretty good about packing stuff, but it was, yeah, like you said, you can find meat and vegetables just about anywhere. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I feel so much freedom right now. Mm -hmm. And the fitness is coming back. So that's a huge thing for me as well. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I um and yeah, you using that that word normally. I mean, I I, I try and avoid using it because that implies I, that implies that like any anything else is like abnormal, which is definitely not like yeah, how you could feel. But um yeah, I mean six months is is not a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And it 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 goes quick. Um but then uh, something that I usually end up speaking to clients about is, um, and I, I use this when a client is doing really well, and I use this when a client has just started and is not doing very well. And that's, you know, w when you're in the, the middle of summer um, and it's, you know, 80 to 100 every day, and, you know, you, you kind of forget how cold and crappy and miserable winter can be, right? And you, 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 you've lost all concept of it, like your, your wardrobe is different, you're waking up, you step outside with no thought of putting a winter coat on. The, the whole concept of how miserable for some people, you know, that um, part of your life was, is, is gone. Um, and the same thing is true 
for when you're in the depths of the symptoms mm. and, and you're, you're struggling, you forget how good life can be. Like you, you, you completely like lose that concept and it's, it feels so foreign. It feels so out of reach. Um, you've just woken up, you've gone to the restroom, you've seen blood. It's your third restroom visit of the day. You feel like you need to go again. You've got a meeting starting at nine. Um, yeah, like you, you completely lose concepts of what life can be like. Yeah. And it's important to, um, remember that, you know, for the person who is, who is struggling that around the corner, you can have this completely different relationship with your diagnosis, with your symptoms, with your life, different parts of your life will be in a better place. Your social life will be in a better place. Your exercise will be in a better place. Your men your place, <laughs> place, your mental health will be um, in a better place. Everything is, is really close to, to kind of being there, but you lose concept of that when you're in the, the depths of um, not doing yeah. so. If you could, you know, go back in time and give some advice to your earlier self, you know, perhaps around the time of your diagnosis or in those first few years of being diagnosed, um, what do you think you would tell yourself? I think that the, the defining factor of all of this was having help, is having someone to be accountable to and to direct the path because all of the information is out there because I've Googled it all. Um, but it, I just would kind of ping pong around and be like, Oh yeah, that new thing, that sounds good. Or that supplement or this shake or whatever, or, or intermittent fasting, you know, what just trying all the things. Um, and, and maybe they work. I just never stuck with anything. So when, and when you have someone also, to direct your thoughts around it, that I stopped perseverating on it all day and worrying about what I was going to eat or how any, all the things that you just overthink. So yeah, it was because we do that for everything else. I mean, we get personal training and we get, you know, we go see counselors and we do all these different things and we don't even think about it. And we go for massage and chiropractor and, but our guts, yeah, sometimes they need some direction as well. Like it, you, no matter how much you Google it, you don't. And I work in healthcare. So I feel like I've got a pretty strong grasp on human anatomy and things, but yeah, it's different when you take that aspect away. And then I just like my brain could rest about it. I didn't have to think about it all day. And if something popped up, then I would just email you and then you would give me the, and I'm like, okay. And then I would move on. You know, it wasn't four hours down the rabbit hole of I mean, six different functional medicine doctors online. So yeah, that was a, I think that for me, that was, that was, well, what I needed. I mean, there, there is so much information out there and I, I'm really bad myself at asking for help. I mean, I, I, I did consult uh, with a few people along the way. I did a whole bunch of like research along the way, but actually asking for help was something I really, you know, struggled to, to do. Um, and I wish I had done honestly, because I would have, you know, been, I would have fast forwarded, uh, myself. I, I wish I'd actually asked, cause I knew of some of the other, um, IBD coaches, you know, when I was going through my, my rough time. Um, and I actually went so far as like making inquiries with some of them, but then not actually embarking on the program with any of them. So, you know, like, like, uh, Dane Johnson, I, mm -hmm. uh, an inquiry through, through his website, didn't end up doing anything. Um, and I was one of these people who kind of, you know, fought and floundered and fiddled myself until I cracked it. And now I obviously, you know, help people to, to do the same, but, um, I wish I'd asked because I would have, you know, saved myself several years of trouble. Um, and also, I mean, to, for you, you know, going back 26 years, I mean, YouTube wasn't a thing, right? Yeah. Like, like it was <laughs> like, I, even if you were really good at asking for help, you like there's very few people to ask, right? Like, I mean, you, it's true. Yeah. You, you could go to, you could go to your doctor, of course, and, you know, get the advice that you of course did get uh, around having, you know, taking drugs and diet, not really being a factor and obviously try and be healthy. Otherwise just good luck. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that, that was you asking for help and, and that's, that's the help that they were able to provide at the time. And now we're in a different position where, you know, there are several people, um, doing what I do. And I think, you know, anyone who's watching this, whether you ask me or someone else, um, it is a, is a time saver because you're right now, you're kind of sitting there looking at these like six to 10 different diets and these 
25 different supplements and these new these oh. new new age medications that are promised to <laughs> not, not affect your immune system and yes you know, and uh being able to cut through the crap is is vital otherwise you're gonna be bouncing around from diet to diet within a few days from supplement to supplement within a few days trying to point fingers at stuff, trying to work out what's helping and what's hindering. And it's just really, really hard to do. I stopped bleeding within, I don't remember exactly, um, but I think it was on the order of like under two weeks from the time that we started. At 90 days, uh, I was down to a calprotectin of five. I feel like a million bucks. My frequency is back to normal. So I could be a normal person, a normal dad again. Now, <laughs> pretty much, I mean, I don't think that, I don't have any disease. I don't have any symptoms. I really like your approach, kind of a simple approach. I went from like, I think I was averaging still four bowel movements a day immediately to one, like within the first week. Now I'm, I feel like I'm back to my old self prior to being diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. I am the heaviest I've ever weighed. I feel very much symptom free. I have normal bowel movements, no blood. I saw tremendous results. There was like no bleeding within, I would say, a week. A diet's gonna work differently for everyone, um, but this one worked for me. It seems to work for a lot of people, so.